What's going on, guys? I hope you're doing well. So should we all panic about Bitcoin, you know, having this little bit of a dump? Um, is it going to go further? Where do I think it's going to go? We're going to be talking about all of that in this video from my personal perspective. Now, I do hope that you enjoy the video. If you do, I'd appreciate you smashing the like button for me, all that fun YouTuber sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, none of this is financial advice, all just my opinion. So do with that what you will. So the chart that I've got here is looking a little bit more messy than normal. But the reason that I wanted to do this is because I wanted to show you, um, for me, just the, the most simple ways of looking at these situations from a technical basis. Because yes, I can look at all the fundamentals and blah, 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 blah. But with asset classes of this size, um, not asset classes, with an asset of this size, you know, for me, it becomes a lot harder to predict um, specific prices. I in all honesty, just don't want to sit here predicting, you know, these crazy prices and making all of these things. That doesn't mean I will never try and predict a price, but it's not my main focus. And the reason is, is because it's so hard to predict. And often if you have a prediction, you can get married to that prediction and you can ignore signs that your prediction might be wrong. And so I like to be open-minded. I like to just play and be more reactive to what is currently going on. And I do that through technical analysis, mainly because that is what I am most comfortable with. I'm also doing some fundamental analysis, but for me, these are the main things that I am looking at. And so today, before we get into it, I just want to, first of all, um, talk about a few things. So bear markets and corrections are followed by bull markets. And bear markets, if you understand and you think that an asset is going to go up in the long run or whatever term you're looking at it from then bear markets or corrections are opportunities they're discounts to get involved you know if you get it's like going into a shop and getting you know in this case this is uh, was a 25 percent correction it's like getting 25 percent off um you know a something at an antiques um dealership and then you can go and sell it on and you you know you've easily uh, made some extra money there just to get it back up to where it was originally i mean that's fantastic right so this is the easiest way to look at the markets you've got to understand that after a bear or market or correction we're going to see a bull cycle assuming that the underlying asset has intrinsic value or has some real world value that is pushing prices higher okay so it's not just dependent on this it needs some sort of push um, but again you can read these things in price anyway because you can see very clearly that up here something has happened regardless of your technical knowledge or fundamental knowledge you can see just as a pure beginner something has happened in these regions that has then pushed prices down to this point down here but regardless of whether you know those reasons or not, you can very clearly see all of the evidence within here, within here. And I'll go into that in a little bit more depth, either in this video or another video. OK, and so there are two different tools that I'm utilizing on this chart here. Let me just get rid of the vertical lines quickly. So the first one is this indicator right here. Now, this is called the pivot high and low indicator. Now, to get it, you simply go up here on trading view and click on indicators and then you go type in pivot. And it is this one right here pivot high and low. Now, in terms of the settings that I've got here, basically what this does is if you imagine a candlestick is right here, then it's going to count how many um, candles are above it on either side. This would be for a low down here. And so these numbers here simply means eight candles above it to the uh, for the low, eight candles above it to the left, eight candles above it to the right. Um, and you can, and obviously as you, you know, reduce these down, the settings will become increasingly aggressive and you'll see more of these. But I found eight, eight for the daily time frame to be a really, really good um, kind of middle ground for me. It will be different for um, higher time frames generally as the higher the time frames go to get the same sort of um, perspective. You'll need to have a more aggressive uh, setting as you go up the time frames to the weekly or the monthly chart or something like that. OK, but I want to show you the sizes. Let's just quickly get rid of the pivot and I'll talk about that in a second. So right here we had a 25 percent correction, 18 percent correction, then a 27 percent correction. So a growing correction or at this point you wouldn't even call it a correction. Um, and then after that, we had a 49 percent dip or a bear market, whatever. OK, now notice how the bear, the corrections are growing here. OK, they're growing in size. Now, this on its own is interesting information, but it's also limited because 
Just by that, you could look at um, a shrinking bear market, right? I'm going to stop saying that. A shrinking correction like this in comparison to its previous, where it's only 18%, and be like, oh, okay, cool. This is a good sign. It shows that the bears are getting weaker. And that's not necessarily true. But I do find for when the cycles, uh, the corrections are getting larger, that it is a good tool. Now, on, it, on its own, it's pretty useless um, most of the time. Um, but Combined with something like this, so all this is going to do is it's going to help you read structure. For those of you that aren't familiar with technical analysis and you're not very good at at least price action based technical analysis, reading market structure might just be not something that you want to learn. But notice how when we, in fact, let me just explain the theory up here quickly just to add some context, okay? But if we are going up, then we're creating higher highs, higher than the previous, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. We're having a series of higher highs and higher lows, indicating that prices have the momentum of going to the upside. Now, imagine that we begin seeing something like this happen. At what point do we monitor that something has potentially changed? Well, it is when we have significantly broken one of these levels down here, and then we begin monitoring the lower highs um, and then we see and when the reverse happens, we simply monitor that as well. Then we begin breaking it here, we get a second confirmation breaking this level here and then continuing to go up. Now, one of the difficulties with market structure for beginners in particular is marking out the right levels, which are the right levels to mark out. This is where this indicator can really shine through. So I'm going to get rid of these sizes of the um, corrections right here. And so you can see it's marking out all of these lows for you. You can see we violate a low right here. This is the first indication that things are beginning to shift around. Now, regardless of whether some news came out around here, I'm not going into the news around this time or anything like that, or there was a dump or blah, 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 this indication is here. And so it's almost factored into price. That is the um, theory behind technical analysis, but it does make perfect sense that this is the case, especially because there is a lot of liquidity in this asset. And so generally technical analysis will work better for it, okay? We can see prices come down here. When prices are going down, we monitor the highs. When prices are going up, we monitor the lows. Everyone will obsess about the highs when it's going up, but for me, the lows are what I'm monitoring, okay? And so when it's coming down right here, monitoring these highs, as soon as we break a high, what happens? Now, of course, it won't always happen like this, that we break the high and then it's just, oh, this perfect picture. Price rarely looks so perfect. And in fact, here's a good example of that. So right down here, okay, we see we come breaking down lows. But remember, what are we doing? We're monitoring highs when it's going down because um, we have uh, created this low right here. Of course, we're not going down until this is here. Why is that? Well, because this low is still higher than this previous low. And so when this breaks, that is a very good sign for us. Of course, if the settings are more aggressive on the pivot high, uh, low indicator like this, you'll see that we will get tons and tons more signals. But that may be a good thing. It may be a bad thing. It really depends on the time frame and the type of trader that you are, how long term you are, and how your plan fits around that. Okay. So let me just get these settings back. Uh, I just found eight to work quite nicely. And so when we look at what's currently going on, okay, and we look at the sizes here, so we can see that we had about a 13% um, retracement here. And then up here, I believe we got down to about 15% down here. Um, if we are predisposed to go higher, and for other reasons that I'm not going to talk about in this video, I do personally think we're going to go higher. But again, I'm not married to that. If we go down, I really do not care. Okay, I obviously hope that we continue going up because that would be a lot easier. But I really don't mind that much because even if it goes down, I can short term trade it down. And then when it switches around, go all the way back up. And I am a big believer in the whole crypto space and all that sort of stuff, as I'm sure all of you guys are as well. So, um, you know, I'm not scared about it you know, going to zero or anything like that. Um, and so if we look at this here and then we look 15 percent here and we've got this low. So remember, we're monitoring the lows um, as the markets are going up. So notice how I've got this line down here. This is my point of reference. Are we going to break this? If we do break it, then I'll begin monitoring the highs. And when I'm monitoring the highs, that is going to give me an indication of when things may turn around again. Now, it's quick. It's po absolutely possible to get quicker notifications of this, you know, for example, six or whatever, a more aggressive setting. But this is more to understand the theory here. I do not care 
that much, whether it goes up, down, sideways, whatever, because my approach is still the same. And by understanding that bear is followed by bull and bull is followed by bear, all I need to be able to do is identify when those two are switching over and when to uh, and how to adapt my approach. Now, combining this understanding with the strategy that I gave in the last video, I think is a very, very simple, very, very powerful way of getting things done in the market. It's very, very simple. It's a simplified version of what I use, but it's a very, very powerful strategy. Okay. Now, translating this into other markets and altcoins and stuff like that. Obviously, as Bitcoin goes up, the altcoins are going to get a, uh, well, the good ones are going to pump as well and vice versa. And so, again, it comes down to understanding what type of trade you are. This will be my final point. We, as we're going down, as we're correcting or in a bear market, even we can short term trade down if that is what we want to do, or when we're in that bear market and we're a little bit more longer term, we simply just see those corrections as chances to buy up those dips and go further. They're two different approaches, but they are both completely valid. You just need to make sure that you are doing things right. Now, I don't know if I've actually talked about this yet. I don't think I have. If I have already talked about this, feel free to leave the video now. But the next thing is you're going to lose. Okay, this is again, another reason why predictions for me are really not that important. Because no matter how much you learn, no matter how much news you digest, you, no matter how much this, that, whatever you do, you are always going to lose. You're always going to be wrong um, sometimes. And so when you understand that and you really think about that, it really becomes less attractive, you know, the whole idea of putting all the money you have into one asset and being a complete maximalist on one thing. It doesn't make sense because ultimately, if you accept that no matter how hard you try, there will always be times that you're wrong, that it will make you come to terms with the fact that there is a big difference between trading and investing and gambling. And so for me, what this means is it means diversifying my risk, spreading my risk between multiple assets um, and asset classes. So outside of crypto as well, and making sure that I am, you know, even if one or two of those are my predictions are completely wrong. So what? It will be mitigated by the wins in other areas and other asset classes. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that potentially my gains may be slightly smaller, um, but it means that my risk is smaller as well. And that for me is more important. Now, there are different variations of this. It doesn't mean that you can't still have these crazy gains. It just means you need to have a balanced portfolio, a high risk portion, a medium risk portion, and a low risk portion, okay? And understanding the differences between those. If you'd like me to make a video expanding on that a little bit more, let me know in the comments section below. But that's the final point for this video. Um, so I really, really hope that you've enjoyed. Um, and, uh, you know, just in terms of this right now, I'm simply just going to be monitoring how Bitcoin um, reacts now. Um, if it does come lower, fantastic. Um, if it just goes up from here, that's also completely fine. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button for me and uh, take care. Love you. All, and I'll see you very, very soon.